Ahoy there, I'm Axel Wilkinson, and thanks for joining me for another HitFilm tutorial. This time around, we are going to demystify the camera system in HitFilm, and hopefully help everyone come to grips with the virtual cameras so that you can use them to your advantage. In both the real world and in HitFilm, a camera allows you to capture a specific perspective of a 3D scene, and record it as a two-dimensional image. In HitFilm, you can work in either 2D or 3D space. The editor is always 2D, and cameras never come into play on this timeline. But in composite shots, you can work with any combination of 2D and 3D layers. If all the layers on your timeline are two-dimensional, you don't need a camera to view them. In fact, even if you add a camera, it won't make any difference in how the layers appear. But as soon as you add a single layer that is 3D, you need to have a camera in order to view it. HitFilm is very polite in this event, and as soon as you try to create a 3D layer, it will tell you that you need a camera and offer to create one for you. You can either click Yes, or cancel the creation of your 3D layer. 3D layers require a camera because HitFilm needs to know what point of view to display them from. The point of view is defined by the camera, so before any 3D object or layer in HitFilm can be shown to you, the software needs to know where the camera will be located what angle it will be at so that it can draw the layer correctly. So as we already saw, anytime a camera is required, HitFilm will let you know and create a camera for you. But you can also create additional cameras manually. In the new layer menu of a composite shot, select camera or press Control alt c and a new camera will be added to the timeline. Now you'll notice the view has changed because the new camera is in a different position. Now I hear some of you asking through the ether of the interwebs, when would you want more than one camera? And the answer is, anytime you might want to show a scene or effect from more than one angle. By setting up multiple cameras from different angles, you can cut from one angle to another while your effects play out. Another instance when two cameras might be useful is when working with stereoscopic footage, where you need two slightly different angles on the effects, one for the left eye and one for the right. By setting up two cameras side by side, you could render out the effects for each eye individually so that the two angles could then be combined by the 3D convergence artists. But only one camera can be active at a time. So how does HitFilm determine which camera to display? Firstly, if more than one camera exists on the timeline, HitFilm will check their duration to find which one covers the current frame. You can adjust the duration of a camera just as you can any other layer. So it's quite simple to set up cuts from one camera to another, simply by adjusting their duration. If two cameras exist on the current frame, then HitFilm will check to see if any of them are disabled. Only cameras which are enabled will render. If there is more than one camera enabled on the current frame, like there is now, then HitFilm selects the one which is highest on the timeline and makes it the active camera. So in most cases, one camera is all you'll need, and HitFilm will kindly create it for you whenever necessary. But for those cases where you need multiple cameras, HitFilm has your back. So, now we'll go back to a single camera. I'm going to remove this one. And we can focus on all of the controls and properties that are unique to camera layers to get a clearer understanding of what they do. The default view in the viewer is active camera, and will display the view of whichever camera is active at the current frame, as we just saw. When in active camera view, we cannot see the camera object in the viewer. So we have special tools to manipulate the position of the camera. If we switch to any other view, then the camera object can be seen, and we can use the widget to move it like any other 3D layer. But in the active camera view, we use these controls to adjust the camera's position. So let's open up the transform properties for this layer so we can see what effect these controls have. The first tool is the Track Z control. If we click and drag on this tool, we can move the camera along the Z axis, or forward and back. The second tool is the Track XY control, which allows you to move the camera laterally on its current plane. So you can go up and down, you can go left or right, or you can go at an angle, but the camera's distance from the subject remain constant. The third tool is the Pan control which allows you to rotate the camera without altering its position in 3D space. This control is equivalent to a tripod head, which allows you to swivel the camera whichever way you want while the camera is locked into one place by the tripod. 
All right, I'm going to jump into the history and just undo those adjustments so our camera's back to where it was. In the controls panel, the lens controls give you full command over what is visible and in focus in your frame. Aperture adjusts the size of the lens opening in your camera, which lets light in to record the scene. It is measured differently in hip film than on a regular camera in that here we have the size given in pixels rather than f-stops. If you know nothing about cameras in real life, the good news is that pixels are much less confusing than f-stops to try and learn. If you're a photographer and have put in all the time and effort to memorize your f-stops, I'm proud of you, but all of that knowledge won't come into play in hit film. So as long as we can remember that dragging to the right increases the aperture size and dragging to the left decreases it, we should be okay. And it shouldn't be hard to remember this because the numbers will get bigger and smaller. So what do we use the aperture control for? In hit film, it controls the depth of the area that is in focus, which is called depth of field. In a real lens, the aperture factors significantly into both the depth of field and the exposure settings. But in hit film, you don't need to worry about the exposure as the virtual camera handles that for you. So we can focus on how the aperture affects the depth of field. Before the aperture control will have any effect though, we first need to enable depth of field in the layer properties. Remember this control because it affects a lot of the lens settings. So with depth of field enabled, a larger aperture is going to create a shallow depth of field where we have a very limited area that's in focus and everything else blurs out in the frame. While a smaller aperture will bring deep focus where virtually the entire scene stays sharp. So if you want to focus on one specific thing and have everything else blurred out, you can use a larger aperture to do so. If you want almost everything to be in focus, use a small aperture. If you want literally everything to be in focus all the time, then just turn off the depth of field toggle. The next control is the zoom, which alters the angle of view of the camera. If we switch to a top view, you can clearly see what the zoom control is actually doing. These blue lines represent the area of the scene that's visible to the camera. So everything outside of that blue triangle, everything out here, is beyond the edges of the frame and the camera can't see it. So as we increase the zoom, you can see how that angle narrows down. And as we decrease the zoom, that widens up to show more of the scene. We can see the practical result of this if we switch back to active camera, where as we increase the zoom, that narrows down what is visible and the end result is that objects which are very far away appear to be much closer as they are now filling more and more of the frame. Focus distance allows you to assign a specific distance from the camera at which things will be in focus. As you get farther away from the specified focal distance, if you have depth of field enabled, things will get more and more blurry. This control though simply specifies the distance at which focus will be perfect. So if we enable that, and we turn up our aperture. You can see right in here is where the focus distance is currently. But if we change that, then you can see how now the focus is much farther away. We can also move that closer so that the focus is now much closer to the camera. Again, you must have depth of field enabled or else everything will be in focus and this control has no effect. Blur controls how much blur is applied outside the focal range. The term for the quality of the out-of-focus portions of an image is bokeh. This is a Japanese word which was directly adopted into English. I used to think it was pronounced bokeh. It's spelled B-O-K-E-H, but the correct pronunciation is bokeh. So, the blur slider gives you control over the bokeh of your footage. And once again, this control also requires depth of field to be enabled for it to have any effect. As we increase that, then there's just more and more blur applied outside of the focal plane. By this point, hopefully you are realizing that when working with selective focus, a number of these controls work together to control where the focus falls and how out of focus the rest of the scene is. For a more detailed look at controlling focus and depth of field, please see our depth of field tutorial which deals specifically with that subject. There are also some camera properties that must be accessed through the timeline. Near clip distance and far clip distance set the closest and farthest point at which layers will be rendered. 
In most cases, these can be left at their defaults. And, of course, the name setting allows you to rename the layer, which you can also do by right-clicking the layer and selecting Rename, or by pressing F2. So, we made it through the camera controls. Once you get the hang of these, you can use these controls to ensure that exactly what you want, and only what you want, is in focus before rendering your HitFilm projects. So, I thank you profusely for watching, and I implore you to subscribe to our YouTube channel to catch our future tutorials as well.